Welcome to episode 19 of the Provenance Marketing Show. I'm your host, Ryan Jennings, and today we've got no products. No one from the New Zealand made community has sent us products, so I can't talk about them. Uh, so, what I'm going to do instead is talk about a couple of things I've been researching in a little bit more detail. So, if you're a business owner or a marketer, this is for you. If you're a consumer, it's probably less for you, but if you're interested to see how marketers can influence your behavior, then listen on to the next few minutes. So the first topic I'm gonna cover is around the advertising effects of nostalgia and lyrics relevance in songs to the ability for a consumer to remember. So uh, when the New Zealand Made campaign was first uh, floated back in 1988, there was a lot of advertising and a lot of that had music with it. You want a breakfast that tastes good, that's quick and easy and is nutritionally well balanced. You can do all of this with hot or cold cereal, milk and Wattie's canned fruit all in one bowl. Couldn't be easy, and it'll really set you up for the day. You'll find my favourite breakfast recipes on these Wattie's leaflets at your supermarket. I'm sure you'll like them too. And music is kind of interesting because as the music gets older, so as we age, that music reminds us of a particular part and time of our childhood or growing up. And that then creates this nostalgia effect. In marketing, nostalgia is powerful when done correctly. And when I was doing my research, one of the things I found is it goes beyond positive attitudes. So if a business or a marketer chooses a song with lyrics that are relevant to the product or to the business, it has a higher affinity and it's easier for the consumer to remember. Hot take, if you're choosing music, I mean apart from making sure it's New Zealand made, uh, choose music where the lyrics are aligned with your product or your business, so it's topical. That creates a neural network memory between the two, so it will fire up and it will wire those connections, making it easier to remember later on. Now, the next thing I found that was interesting is the song doesn't need to be that old. So if you as a marketer are choosing a song that's at least 10 years old, it will induce nostalgia effects. If your marketplace is baby boomers, yes, it's going to work because a baby boomer has been around for 60, 65 years on the planet. But if you're a millennial, it also works. If you are targeting, let's say, an Anna or a Hugo here, who are in the age bracket of, I don't know, 19 to 25, take it back 10 years, you wanna look for songs that came out when they were nine to 15. The reason for this is because we all look for simpler times. We all want to live in simpler times. And we think it was simpler in the past, not now, and not in the future. And the reason I talk about song lyrics is because not a lot of us are using them as marketers and business owners because on the newsfeed, everything auto plays on video and it's silent. And I think there's an opportunity there, particularly if you're getting into the podcast game uh, or if you're looking at ways of getting a audio sonic brand to go along with your visual branding. The second one, this is kind of an interesting one. So this could be a little bit uh, of a debate on this because the topic is how childhood advertising exposure can create biased product evaluations. So you as a kid or me or any of us we are exposed to advertisements to marketers' content. That content, it has been proven, will affect our product choices, not just when we are a child, like between the ages of, I don't know, zero to 13, but it affects our bias in what we buy for the rest of our lives. Now, marketers have known this for some time and probably used it to great effect but not necessarily with the best health consequences, particularly when it comes to 
certain types of products that maybe are high in sugar or high in fat. Now, the research around this says that it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad product to have that product bias evaluation. So what it made me think of is what are the big issues that we all care about now around sustainability, around recycling, around leaving the planet in a better state for our kids and grandkids. What could a social enterprise marketer do to take advantage of that knowledge that someone between the ages of zero and 13 is more likely to care about those three topics if they're exposed to it as a child? So one thing you can do is you can create characters. Absa Kiwi Lootly. After all, the rest of the world is. And when you see this Kiwi, you've got a deal. You can create fun learning characters. You can create educational games. All of those types of things can be positive for society and actually positive for a child as well as positive for your social enterprise. But the third angle on this is to look at it as a vulnerability that being able to influence kids under the age of 13 with marketing messages, whether they're good or bad, is actually unethical in itself. And there should be public policy around it to limit the potential for harm to our most vulnerable or most youngest. And that's probably the one that I err on the side of. I think there's plenty of time for marketers to do great work and we don't need to necessarily rely on our children uh, or us when we're kids to make product decisions. It should be a time to just be a child. So I'll leave that one with you. Comment below if you think the uh, ads should be banned for kids under the age of 13, or whether that should be used for a force for good, uh, or maybe some other comments you have on this particular topic. So those are the two topics for this week. It's been a short episode. I hope to get some more uh, products from our manufacturers in the next week. If you're watching this, send them through. We've got an empty desk at the moment. If you like this format and would like to see more of it, comment below or uh, subscribe on the podcast and maybe send me a message on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at Business Kiwi. And that's the show for this week. See you next week.